My name is Heidi. I work with uh, Vocational Rehabilitation Services. And what's your name? Shelly George. Oh, nice to meet you. No, nice to meet you too. So I'm curious why you've come in today for this appointment. Um, I need help finding another job. Okay. Are you aware of the VR mission, the Vocational Rehabilitations mission? No. Okay. Have you ever heard of the, the VR program? Video program? Oh, sorry. VR, Vocational Rehabilitation. Yes, I have yeah. heard of it. So what do you understand the VR program to be? To help me find a job more uh, to, for my situation, being hard of hearing. Um, I need help finding something else to do other than what I've been. Okay. I'd like to ask you some questions. Questions about your background to help me to kind of understand where you're coming from. Okay. So how did you lose your hearing? Um, nobody knows. <laughs> Were you born with hearing loss? No, it came about, um, about 14, I started losing my hearing a little at a time. And uh, by 23, I was wearing hearing aids. And it slowed decline from there. Did your audiologist explain to you why you had a hearing loss? Um, no, they don't know. The UNT had no idea. Is there any family history of hearing loss? No. Oh, wow, nothing. Okay. Any great grandparents or distant cousins or anyone that you know of that had a hearing loss? My grandma in her 80s started wearing hearing aids. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, okay. So, no other relatives then? No distant cousins or anything Nothing. like that now? Wow, okay. Um, so this is an application for you to apply for the Vocational Rehabilitation Services. We just need you to fill this out uh, with all the information necessary on the application. And I'd like to gather some of your work history um, these right here, they don't exactly explain a whole lot about work history. So I will kind of gather your information about your work history and that will help me to kind of know where you're coming from also. What kind of training you've had or, you know, did you have any uh, higher education? Did you go to college? Did you have any uh, training that you've done or anything like that? Um, <clears throat> It's like a work program, high school core. A lot of seniors have work programs that they can be involved in that lead to employment. And if you've never had that program before or been in that program before, that's okay. Um, you know, what kind of education you have. So that's all here that we'll talk about. Okay. So <clears throat> maybe you could go ahead and explain to me some of your work history. Okay. And I'll just, I'll make notes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> After high school, I went to beauty school. Um, I was working as a co cosmetologist at, uh, by 19, and I've done that for 25 years. But my hearing is getting where why I, can't, why I refuse to answer the phone anymore because I cannot get names and numbers. Um, I can't hear the person in my chair anymore. Um, I have to come around to the front and face them a lot. And when I go back behind them, I can't hear any anymore what they're saying. So if they talk a lot, I have to stop and keep going forward or spinning them around. And it slows down time. And, for the, and then when the noise gets too bad, when there's more than, say, two of us working at a time, the noise is so great. I, I can't understand anything, and at that point I become a very boring hairdresser. And I'm in Arizona, when I lived in Arizona, 
I had my clientele conditioned to it, and I had no idea. But when I moved to Salt Lake three years ago and tried to start again, it was uh, not easy. <laughs> okay. So did you notice that you were making any mistakes with some of the, the work that you had done? No, I'm always right up front. I, I repeat back everything, and sometimes in a different way to make sure I got it right. But then I go back behind, and I'm, I'm again the boring hairdresser, and it takes a lot of personality to keep customers. I guess I'm curious, how much hearing loss do you have now, or how much hearing do you have? Do, do you know what I mean? Have you, have you seen your audiogram, and do you understand that? Yeah. Um, the last audiogram I had, the speech discrimination part, the woman was doing it, and I had 30% and like 25% of speech discrimination. It's like the classic ski soap loss, and I've lost some of these tones altogether, and I have a mild loss in the low tones. So is the audiogram, like does it, with the low pitches, do you hear better in the low pitches? Low pitches. Okay, so it looks like it just goes down, the slope is, slope, yeah. yeah. Black run. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love to ski myself, so <laughs> I can relate. Okay, so what kind of hearing aids do you use right now? Phonak Natos. Okay. Is it a type three or a type four? I think four. Okay. Yeah, the most expensive one, the top uh, quality of, of all of the, you know, with all the features and everything, is that what you, so do you have the ICOM, the Bluetooth? No, I didn't have Bluetooth capabilities when I bought them. Ah, darn. But I did get an FM system hooked up to the re FM receiver built into my hearing aid. So are you working now or, yeah, so are you working right now? No. No, I had a bad experience with um, one of the other girls trying to force me to answer the phone all the time. She was nice and, but it was just a lot of pressure from her to answer the phone and I just couldn't do it anymore. So I just. I sort of quit. Even though everybody else was okay with it, I, I worked next to the one and I just had the pressure all the time. Okay, so really ha being able to use the phone was an impediment to the employment because that was a function that you couldn't really use, right? So I guess also you do rely heavily on communication though in that type of a job, right? Working with your customers. Yeah, well the phone is a building clientele. You try to, we hope for the new, new clients to come in and I can book them with me. But if I can't answer the phone, I lose the ability, some ability to get clients. Oh, I see. Do you have any other work history? Or is it, has it only been cosmetology that you've done for the past? I did that my, my whole life, <laughs> adult life. Do you feel that you have any other skills that you know of that you could use? I have thought about uh, massage because that shouldn't involve a lot of talking. <laughs> oh, sometimes it does, but sometimes not. Um, I guess it depends. If the person is laying on their stomach and you're massaging their back, they may talk to you. They may try to explain to you where it hurts, where they want you to work. Um, I guess it may depend on, you know, the positioning, if they're on their back or something. If you're working on their lower back or upper back, I guess it could depend. So if you're not sure what you really want to do, we can provide a vocational assessment. And that okay. would probably be a good thing to do. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'm glad that you brought that up with your work history. That tells me a lot. And... Just being able to get the information here as we fill out the application, we can go ahead and make another appointment. And uh, also, I'd like to look into a possibility of retraining, you know, having additional training or 
some other kind of training that we could provide. We also have um, on-the-job uh, training that we could do, but if you'd rather, we could also maybe have you go back to school and look into that. So really, I guess we'll just look at that vocational assessment and see what would be best. Okay, that sounds good. So what I think I'd like is, I'd like to see your audiogram, and that will help determine your eligibility for our services. Okay. Um, I'd like to do that as soon as possible, probably within the 60-day time frame. Oh, I don't want to procrastinate, you know, and uh, so we want to do that within 60 days. So really, the sooner the better, and we can quickly move on, and we can uh, establish a, an appointment for a vocational assessment, and that takes about a two-month time frame uh, waiting period yeah. to have that assessment. So it does take a while to get in. There's a lot of clients that are trying to, to do the same assessment okay. um, of the evaluation. So. Okay. Um, also, if you'd like to know more about the program, you could kind of look through this. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I don't use the phone either, really, so email is my best friend. <laughs> so, but yeah, you can look through the program here. And also, I want to explain this. Maybe, do you know about this, CAP? It's the Client Assistance Program. As an example, if you go through... Um, VR services, we have a plan and everything. If you disagree with the decision of the counselor, you can contact the client assistance program and you can appeal the decision. So maybe we have some kind of an, a disagreement or something, we can go through an appeal process to try and say, solve the problem and really take care of that. This is really an advocacy group for uh, clients with disabilities. Okay? Okay. All right. That sounds good. Thank you. Okay, well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. All right. Thanks.